When you think street photography, do you picture a camera that looks like this? Or maybe one of these? Or of course, you might be picturing the silhouette of what many would consider the definitive street photography camera. These are all iconic street photography cameras, and often for good reason. But I'd say in general, film cameras tend to offer a better experience and ergonomics when it comes to street photography. And lately, it might be a little bit too easy to get the impression you need one of these titans of the street to capture a decisive moment. But beyond the price tag of these icons, I suspect for some, even the thought of using film can be pretty intimidating and a huge barrier to entry before they even hit the streets. So today, I wanted to help you put all of that aside and recommend a series of cameras that I feel is the best way to get comfortable at what is arguably one of the most difficult genres of photography. I'm David, and this is The Whole Picture. The Humble Pen inexpensive, widely available, with no frills, just the bare minimum necessary to capture a photo. To me, this series of compact half-frame film cameras from Olympus is the best platform to get started learning the art of street photography. My reasoning being, the stakes are low. Let me explain. The absolute best way to quit street photography on your first day is to invest a ton of money into a quote-unquote street photographer's camera, finally find your decisive moment, and choke. Whether it's from an unnecessarily complex and fiddly camera, or because your camera feels heavy. Heavy from its reputation and the expectations that brings. Heavy with the pressures of not wanting to waste a single shot. Or your camera might feel unmovably heavy because you're uncomfortable with the thought of pointing it at a stranger so brazenly. The stakes can feel unnecessarily high before you even start. At the same time, I find the stakes of digital to be just a little bit too low. It's easy to feel uncomfortable or non-committal when you're presented with a great photographic opportunity. And I found that street photography can even feel more like a battle with your psyche rather than a photographic art form. Especially at the beginning, where it's very easy to talk yourself out of taking what could otherwise be a beautiful and poetic photo. So the stakes, environment, mentality, and of course your camera all play a big role in whether you're going to have a positive or negative experience when starting out in street photography. Even after 10 years of primarily analog street photography, I often find myself flinching at these decisive moments. And I've even found myself in a slump these last few years to the point where I'm questioning whether I'm cut out for this or not. But when I decided to take this stunning Pen W out with me the other day, something just clicked. I was back to basics without the friction, high expectations, and even the pressure to perform, which is so easy to come by these days. With open eyes, an open mind, and 72 pictures in my hand, I found myself pushing my limits and honestly flat out failing, but eager to get back up and continue photographing and experimenting right away. Which led me to think, this is exactly the kind of mindset and camera that facilitates learning and the perfect choice for those looking to actually grow and improve, whether you're new to the streets or a seasoned veteran that just needs a refresh. For some background information, the original Olympus Pen was a half-frame film camera that captured an 18 by 24 millimeter photo on standard 35 millimeter film. It featured a 2.8 centimeter f3.5 lens, was full manual with no light meter, and was built as a budget camera from the ground up. The series was immensely successful and ran from the late 50s to the early 80s with a variety of models being produced. While the SLR style Olympus Pen is also extremely popular, for the purposes of this video and learning street photography, I'm focusing on and recommending the compact non-interchangeable lens models. And also to note, while most models are fairly inexpensive and can often be had for under $100, there are some rare variations like the Pen W I'm heavily featuring in this video that can fetch a premium price. And while I love the Pen W and its fantastic wide-angle lens, by no means is it necessary for the purposes of learning and becoming comfortable at street photography. In fact, I'd say that the more normal focal length lenses on the standard pen models of about 40 to 50 mm full frame equivalents will be more accessible for those just getting started, as you can maintain some distance from your subjects while still capturing a street-style photo. And of course, their accessible prices and wider availability fits into the low stakes, high return mindset that's so beneficial for getting practical experience. In fact, one of my first film cameras was actually this Olympus Pen D I picked up about 10 years ago. Reflecting on the photos and experience I had with this camera and those that followed, I began to think maybe this Pen D had more significance in my journey as a street photographer than any Leica or other camera I've used since. That being said, you might not believe me when you see the first street photos I took on the Pen D, where it's very clear I was uncomfortable photographing on the street. But as I went through the photos, I was surprised. I saw experimentation and gradually more confidence even within the same roll of film. I had experience with film cameras before picking up the Pen D, but it seems that 72 frames gave me the leeway I needed to reach for something I normally wouldn't take or photograph different angles of the same scene. At the same time, I wasn't just burning through film and I respected the limited nature of an analog format. 
So the stakes were low enough I felt comfortable pushing my boundaries, experimenting, and even failing, but at the same time there was enough skin in the game, knowing I had to pay for processing of the film or develop the photos myself, so I wasn't just mindlessly snapping away. Similarly, I couldn't imagine that the pen's bare-bones nature would set me up to succeed later in my street photography career. More specifically, the way that you operate, say, a Leica and one of these pens can functionally be very similar, especially when it comes to the way that I do street photography. Scale focus, hyperfocal distance techniques, and compensating for inexact framing are often cornerstones of street photography and essential for those quote-unquote street photographer's cameras I showed at the beginning of this video. But they can also have a learning curve if you're coming from an SLR or a digital mirrorless camera and take time to master. So using the pen for a few years primed me to hit the ground running when I changed gear from a Leica to a Rolleiflex or even any number of premium compacts I tried, all with very little to no learning curve. Many of those cameras have more advanced features like a rangefinder, ground glass, or even autofocus, while the pen's framing and focus is much more of an educated guess at best. You simply dial in the distance you want the lens to focus at and frame using the lines in the finder. It's not an accurate process by any means, but learning these techniques on the pen felt akin to swinging a weighted baseball bat to warm up before you get to the plate. Starting with something more challenging like scale focus allows you to approach more complex or even more convenient systems with a leg up. And in general, if you understand and master scale focus, one of the most basic functions of a camera and photography, you should feel confident in your ability to use just about any camera to take street photos. Similarly, I would also recommend picking up a pen camera without a light meter because it forces you to do something you would otherwise probably disregard. Learn to read light with your own eyes and make critical exposure decisions based on your own judgments and not what the meter tells you. Being able to read light was often a necessary skill of the past, but it's often overlooked today and not unsurprisingly because we have so many modern conveniences when it comes to photography. But as you gain experience in street photography, I think you'll find that exposure can be one of the most powerful tools for visual storytelling. And while you could technically learn something like the Sunny 16 rule on just about any camera, I'd say many of us need the kind of push that comes from using a camera with no light meter to motivate ourselves to get practical experience with reading light. Again here, I find film to be a motivating factor to actually consider your exposure settings before taking a photo, but having the 72 pictures you get from a half frame camera allows you to say, take an extra exposure with different settings, so you have less potential to be devastated by developing a role and having very little to show for it. That being said, if you're still not convinced, I highly recommend you watch my video on metering light for street photography. I outline a technique that allows for the confidence and security that comes from using a light meter, but in a way that you're not reliant on it, and you can make critical exposure decisions on your own. While learning to read light is a skill that you have to develop over time, I found there are some inherent benefits to using half-frame film cameras like the Pen series when it comes to street photography. For example, these half-frame film cameras capture more relative depth of field compared to a lens with the same angle of view on a traditional full-frame camera. This might not sound like an advantage for those that love a shallow depth of field, but it's very practical when it comes to learning street photography. As even wide open, it gives you more margin for error to capture the important elements of your photo in focus. That being said, unfortunately I don't think any of these pens have a depth of field scale on the actual lens, rather they just display the focus distance. While the scale would have been great, I think their compact size means that even if you had one, it would probably be difficult to read, especially on the fly, like you often have to do in street photography. To me, their minuscule size is not a downside though, and ironically, it's the biggest reason why I'm recommending them for beginners to the world of street photography. Their compact size of course means you can always have them with you, leading to more experience, but honestly, these things look like toys, and that's more important than you might expect when it comes to street photography. With a larger camera, it's incredibly easy to feel uncomfortable pointing even a mid-sized mirrorless camera at someone's direction, and while at first you might have some residual feelings of this when using the pen, I found it quickly melts away as you realize the camera in your hands is not the least bit threatening. If anything, it might invite people's curiosities, interested in what kind of camera you're using, and you can do an impromptu street portrait out of that, which can also be valuable experience getting acclimated into photographing on the street. And I feel this was very helpful for getting me out of my slump. I've gotten the full spectrum using the pen early on in my career to even using a 4x5 camera for street photography, and I found in the process, the camera does play a big part in how comfortable you feel as the photographer, and I'm sure it plays a big part in how comfortable your subjects are when they're being photographed. Everyone's style is different, and with time, you'll develop your own methods and find what camera suits you best, but when you're getting started, I think something like this is going to be extremely beneficial, allowing yourself to feel comfortable when you're out trying something that's new and honestly very difficult. 
None of this was on my mind when I first picked up the pen D. In fact, I barely knew what street photography was and kind of stumbled my way into it. But reflecting on my experiences, the pen D seems fundamental to my street photography career. In retrospect, it helped me build a foundation of skills that are necessary for street photography. And similarly, the pen W helped me get back to basics. And at the end of the day, when it comes to learning street photography, you have to be patient. And also, you shouldn't be too hard on yourself. This kind of reflection and revival helped highlight something for me beyond the camera itself, and it's something that probably applies to any creative endeavor. It feels like it's increasingly easier to just want to throw a bunch of money at equipment we're not prepared for, forego the basics, and attempt to jump into the deep end before we learn to swim. While this can be more appealing and exciting, it's also a great way to get a bad first impression of the craft. Negative experiences tend to stick with us much more than positive ones, so I hope you'll seriously consider learning the basics of street photography on one of these wonderful cameras. And after all of this, if you find that street photography is just not for you, it's totally okay. You didn't spend too much money and it's easy to recoup your cost by selling off the camera, or you can keep it and have something really fun to experiment with in other ways. I could honestly go on for hours on why I think the pen is a great first street photography camera. The shutter is extremely quiet, which is more accessible for beginners, and a fixed lens camera is going to cut down on the amount of decisions you have to make before you actually get out on the street. And I'd also like to go a bit deeper on my reasoning for film being the best medium to learn street photography on, or even just photography in general. But I think that would be better served with its own separate video, as I've already taken up quite a bit of your time if you watch this far. And if you have any questions on this topic or anything else related to film or cameras, feel free to leave a comment down below. I always try my best to reply to everyone. And if you found this video helpful or informative, please consider sharing it with someone else that could benefit from it. Anyways, I'm David, and this is The Whole Picture.